Welcome back. In the next few videos, you'll continue to explore the data analytics tools we discussed earlier, and you'll get the chance to see them in action a little bit. This will give you a clearer picture of how to use these tools. The rest of the program will build on from what you learned here. We'll start with a closer look at spreadsheets. We'll break spreadsheets down to their basics to better understand a few of their features and functions. You'll also learn how you might want to use them in your work as a data analyst. For example, how do you sort your data to make it easier to use? We'll find out. Next, we'll see SQL in action. Data analysts use SQL in their work all the time, like when they need a large amount of data in seconds to help answer a quick business question. Chances are you're not familiar with SQL. That's OK. You'll learn how using SQL is just like ordering food at a super speedy restaurant. Your SQL query might not be as delicious, but you won't have to wait long to get your order. Speaking of food, what better topic than dessert? You can think of data visualization as the dessert to the meal of data analytics. It's served at the end of your analysis after you've done what you need to get the right data for a question or task. We've already seen that visualizations come in a lot of forms, like graphs or charts. And just like dessert, they're a treat to look at. You'll learn more about these visual representations and see other examples of how they might look. Then you'll get to talk about visualizations with other future data analysts just like yourself. We'll wrap things up with an assessment, but you'll have time to review what you've learned before then. OK, let's keep going. By the way, is anyone else hungry now? Spreadsheets are a big part of data analytics. The sooner you make friends with spreadsheets, the better. Trust me, they'll save you a lot of time as a data analyst and make your whole job easier. This spreadsheet is one example of how an organized spreadsheet might look. In this video, we'll demonstrate some of the basic spreadsheet concepts for all of you who are new to this world. This might be a review for some of you more experienced folks out there, but it never hurts to practice what you know. Plus, you might still learn a trick or two. I showed you this image earlier. Let's explore it further because it's a great example of the three main features of a spreadsheet, cells, rows, and columns. They'll be part of almost everything you do in a spreadsheet, from making a simple grocery list to analyzing a complex data set. I use spreadsheets to manage everything from my own personal finances to the annual homecoming party my friends and I have every year. I'm the planner. So I use a spreadsheet to keep things in order, making sure we have everything we need. Speaking of keeping things in order, columns are organized vertically in a spreadsheet and are ordered by letter. And the rows are organized horizontally and are ordered by number. So when you talk about a specific cell, you name it by combining the column letter and the row number where the cell is located. For example, in this spreadsheet, the word row is in cell D3. Let's get started in an actual spreadsheet. You can complete all of the steps in just about any spreadsheet program. Let's get to know your spreadsheet a little better now. All right, we'll start with some basic operations. Keep in mind, as an analyst, you won't always create your own data set. But for now, let's do just that. I'll click in cell A2 and type my first name like this. Then I'll click in cell B2 and type my last name. Don't worry if your name doesn't fit in the cell. You can always make columns wider if you need to. All you have to do is click and drag the right edge of the column until your name fits. Or you can use the text wrapping feature which will set cells to automatically change their height to allow the text in the cell to fit. To use this feature, select the cells, columns, or rows with text. Then use the Format menu to look at the text wrapping options. It is automatically set to allow the text to overflow out of the cell. But you can wrap the text instead, so all of the text is visible. The Clip option will cut off the text in the cell 
so only the text that fits is visible. There it is. We've added data. Now, let's label it. This is important for organization. Adding labels to the top of the columns will make it easier to reference and find data later on when you're doing analysis. These column labels are usually called attributes. An attribute is a characteristic or quality of data used to label a column in a table. More commonly, attributes are referred to as column names, column labels, headers, or the header row. All right, let's add some headers to our table. I'll click in cell A1 and type the words first name. In cell B1, I'll type last name. We'll make these attributes bold so they stand out more. Spreadsheets can get really big, so you want to make sure your data is clearly labeled and easy to find. I can use my cursor to select the cells with the attributes. Then I'll click the bold icon to make them bold. Looking good so far. Ready to add some more data? Let's start with some new attributes. First, I'll add a column for the number of siblings by typing siblings in cell C1. Then, I'll add two more attributes in the next two columns. Let's go with favorite color and favorite dessert. I'll make them bold too. And to fit the labels in the cells, I'll adjust the size of the columns just like before. Now, keep in mind, there are more ways to adjust the size of the columns and rows. If you have questions about using spreadsheets, a quick search online will usually help you find what you need. We've also included a reading with more tips and information about spreadsheets. Okay, let's get back to it. Now, I can add my own data to the data set. I'll type in how many siblings I have and my favorite color and dessert in the appropriate cells. Next, I'll add data for two more people. We now have three rows of data. In a data set, a row is also called an observation. An observation includes all of the attributes for something contained in a row of a data table. In this case, row three is an observation of Willa Stein because we see all of her attributes in this row. So now we know spreadsheets let you do lots of things with data. You can store and organize data like we've done in this spreadsheet. But you can go even further and recognize existing data too. Here, I'll show you how. Let's say we want to organize our data by how many siblings each person has. There's a simple way to do that. First, we'll need to select all of our columns with data so that all of it is reorganized together. Then, we can go to our data menu. Here, we have some options. Let's select Sort Range. This will let us choose how to organize the column. Next, we'll choose A to Z, which will organize our numbers in order from smallest to largest. Now, we want to watch out for our header row, which is the word siblings, the attribute for this column. We'll check this box. This makes sure the word siblings stays in place. All right, now we're ready to sort. Voila! We just reorganized our data by sorting it from the smallest number to the largest. And as we go further, you'll discover lots of other ways to work with data in a spreadsheet including functions and formulas. Let's finish with a quick example of a formula. You can think of formulas as one way of manipulating data in a spreadsheet. Formulas are like a calculator, but more powerful. A formula is a set of instructions that performs a specific action using the data in a spreadsheet. To do this, the formula uses cell references for the values it's calculating. Let me show you. Here we go. We'll click in the next cell in the siblings column. Then, we'll type an equal sign. 
All formulas begin with this symbol. Next, we'll type in the cells we want to add together. In this case, we'll type in C2 plus C3 plus C4. Now, we can press enter. And there it is. The formula has given us the total number of siblings represented in this data set. We've just analyzed some data. We'll want to store the data for later use. In Google Sheets, a spreadsheet is automatically saved in your Google Drive. For Excel and other spreadsheets, you'll save them as a file. And now you know some basics for using spreadsheets. Once you're used to these concepts, you'll be able to learn even more about spreadsheet tools. Feel free to rewatch this video and practice on your own. You can even make your own version of this spreadsheet with your own data. Bye for now. As you might remember, earlier we touched on the query language SQL. In this video, you'll see SQL in action and learn what you can do with it, with some examples of specific queries. I guess you can call this the SQL SQL. We'll try to make this one even better than the original. Remember, SQL can do lots of the same things with data that spreadsheets can do. You can use it to store, organize, and analyze your data, among other things. But like any good SQL, it's on a larger scale, bigger, more action-packed. Think of it as supersized spreadsheets. For example, you might want to consider a spreadsheet when you have a smaller data set, such as one with just 100 rows. But if your data set seems to go on forever, and your spreadsheet is struggling to keep up, SQL would be the way to go. When you use SQL, you'll need a place where the SQL language is understood. If you've ever gone somewhere and not known the language, it can be challenging to communicate. You might think you're asking for one thing and get something completely different. Well, SQL knows the feeling. SQL needs a database that will understand its language. So let's talk. There are a number of databases out there that use SQL. You may use several of them during your time as a data analyst. But here's the thing. No matter which database you use, SQL basically works for the same in each. For example, in SQL, queries are universal. We've talked about queries before, but it never hurts to have a refresher. A query is a request for data or information from a database. Here's the structure of a basic query. You can see that with this query, we can select specific data from a table. By adding where, we can filter the data based on certain conditions. All right, let's get started. We'll open our database and see how SQL can communicate with it to do some simple data tasks. First, let's select our data set. We'll use an asterisk to select all of the data from the table. And with that simple query, the database calls up the table we need. Magic. Let's add where to our query to show how that changes what data we get. You can see the data now only shows movies that are in the action genre. And that's it. A basic query in SQL. Pretty cool, huh? Soon, you'll learn about building more complex queries. For now, though, we can celebrate learning about the structure of a basic SQL query. Select, from, and where. As you continue the program, you'll have the opportunity to use SQL yourself. So I hope this video was a useful sneak peek at what's coming later. I'm Angie. I'm a program manager of engineering at Google. I'm currently working on the data analytics certificate. And previously, I was a researcher in people analytics. I was also what I call an analytical mercenary, working for a lot of different companies to help them make sense of their data. Every time I learn a new skill, 
I feel like I'm learning how to speak all over again. I remember the first time I learned SQL, I was so frustrated because everyone around me just, it felt like they were fluent. They knew exactly what they were doing. And I remember struggling with the most basic things, just like getting the data out of the table, right? Or uh, I remember somebody asked me just to find like an average of something and I kept on getting an error. And it really does feel like you're learning a new language and you're at toddler level and everyone around you is like maybe fluent. So my parents immigrated to this country when they were in their 30s. So after, you know, they had learned another language and they had to start over and learn, you know, English. And I remember as a child watching them struggle every day to pick up a new language, to do really basic things, uh, like ask for help at the grocery store. Uh, I remember calling the cable company when I was six, uh, asking them questions about the bill because my parents couldn't. And I remember how hard they worked to learn this new language and to become fluent, you know, and Every time I'm learning a new data language like SQL or R, I think about how hard that must have been. And I, I think if they can do that, I can learn SQL. Um, if they can ask for help for the most basic of things, I can ask the data analyst next to me you know, how to write a SQL statement, how to get data out of a table. Um, and that's really helped me, is just having that mindset and knowing that I can ask for help. Wow, your data analysis toolbox is getting full. Learning about both spreadsheets and SQL will get you far in the world of data analysis. There's more to learn, of course, and lots more tools you'll be able to use. But your future is looking bright, and it's about to look even brighter, because we're here to talk more about data visualization. I'll tell you a little more about the role of data visualization tools in data analytics and give you a chance to see those tools in action later in this video. You might remember that data visualization is the graphical representation of information. For tons of data analysts, it's the most exciting part of their job because they get to see their hard work pay off with something interesting. Not to mention that data visualization is beautiful and useful. I was floored when I got to Google and started to get a quarterly data report in my email. It had a big slide deck where people contributed their visualizations. It was definitely a source of light as I started to build my own visualizations. If you're not impressed by my story, let me tell you about Florence Nightingale. Does that name ring a bell? She's responsible for much of the philosophy of modern nursing. And believe it or not, she was also a data analyst. During the Crimean War, in the 1850s, thousands of soldiers were dying every day. Nightingale wanted to find a way to reduce the number of deaths. After examining the data, she found that the majority of soldiers were dying from preventable conditions. To convince hospital administrators that they needed to focus on these conditions, she created a chart showing the number of deaths over several months. The much larger blue sections in the visualization represent the preventable deaths. Her work directly led to major changes in patient care. And she did all of this over 150 years ago without a computer. One of the main reasons Nightingale created this visualization was to make the data easier to digest for her audience. She felt she'd be more successful convincing the stakeholders using visuals instead of just words and numbers. She was right. Tables filled with data, while necessary for analysis, just aren't able to show trends and patterns as quickly and clearly as visualizations can. Imagine you receive an assignment that needs to be completed the same day. You gather the data you need in a table. Could you explain your findings using the table? Yes, you probably could. But a better idea would be to use a visualization like this bar graph. Something like this makes it much easier for you to explain quickly. And you've got the benefit of a cool graphic to back up your analysis. As a data analyst, you'll want to create visualizations that make the data easy to understand and interesting to look at. So show it off. Stakeholders may not have much time to devote to the data. Your job will be to make their time worthwhile. Let's go back to that data table we created earlier in the course. 
If you created your own for practice, you can open it up now or try this out later. Here's the data we added before. Let's create a visualization of the data by inserting a chart, a bar graph. Boom. You can see that the spreadsheet visualized the data from our table in a way that made the most sense. It created a bar graph or column chart to compare the ages of each person by name. But you might have figured that out already. That's the beauty of visualization. It shows data analysis quickly and clearly. We can use Chart Editor to adjust the chart. Different spreadsheet programs might have different ways to do this, but they all have visualization functions and ways to edit those visualizations. All right, for now, let's just look at the suggested charts. We can make the bars go horizontally using a bar chart. That looks great. So let's close the chart editor. There are lots of options to look at, but we'll keep it basic for now. Feel free to try other visualizations if you practice later. Now we can adjust our chart to make our whole spreadsheet look clean and professional. Excellent. I hope you learn to love data visualization as much as I do. Maybe you'll become a data visualization pioneer just like Florence Nightingale. As a budding data analyst, you've started to fill your utility belt with valuable tools that you'll use throughout the rest of the program. Having spreadsheets, SQL, and data visualization know-how will help make you an ace data detective. You'll be able to use these tools throughout the data analytics process as you move forward. Coming up next, you'll complete a few activities to wrap up this part of the program. You'll also complete an assessment to check your understanding of all that you learn. This is a great opportunity to think about some of the areas that you'll continue to explore in this course and in your career. As always, feel free to review the videos and readings to help remind you of certain topics and ideas, even if you already feel prepared. You're just a few steps away from the next course. That's great progress. Keep it up. My name is Lila Jones, and I am a part of our cloud team. I get a chance to lead a team of amazing individuals that are focused on helping customers get to the cloud. Data visualizations, that's a long word, and that can also make your eyes glaze over. But I wonder if when you were little and you were with your parents, maybe they had a bedtime routine, or maybe you have children, you're doing a bedtime routine with them, you very rarely are gonna come to those children with, a bunch of facts and figures before they go to bed. But I bet you probably are telling them a story. You're showing them pictures. I know I always loved comic books. Pictures tell a story. Data visualizations are pictures. They are a wonderful way to take very basic ideas around data and data points and make them come alive. You can do uh, all different types of combinations of visualizations, but the ones that are interactive Wow, those are huge. Can you imagine being an executive in an organization and trying to figure out, wow, should we open up a, another site in, in Bangkok? Does that make sense? And us being able to walk in and saying, here's why it makes sense and having great data visualizations to support all of our points of view makes it a no-brainer. Interestingly enough, I do recall the first time I came across a super amazing visualization. It was in my personal life. I switched my budgeting software from one provider to another. And the provider that I switched to was really focused on every dollar has a job and making sure you're budgeting every single dollar. They gave visualizations that changed depending on what input you would add to it. And it really just changed my entire perspective, the entire thing. So. Having the data is like having the answer sheet for a test. It really just lets you know that you're going to make good decisions because it's backed up by data.